Jabala Tarias. And I said, now two minutes have gone. How do you contact fire? Number one, become a sacrifice. Every time a sacrifice is placed on the altar, the fire falls. These are auto mechanisms of the spirit. And this is most important than what we will do here this morning. When you find men that are always on fire, it's because they are living sacrifices. You can contact fire and lose it. But when you become a sacrifice, you are burning all your life. So the secret of being on fire unending is to become a sacrifice. Because God responds to sacrifices by fire. Let me show you a few scriptures. 1 Kings 18 verse 38 Everything that was happening God was not moved Until the sacrifice was placed on the altar The moment Elijah Placed the sacrifice on the altar The Bible said the fire of God Fell and consumed it God responds to sacrifice But God's response to sacrifice Is in the similitude of fire And so when you find a man burning That man is a sacrifice before you desire the fire be ready to pay the price it takes sacrifice to contact fire if there is no sacrifice there can never be fire on your life many people think fire is a gift there are many gifts of the spirit fire is not one of them fire only responds to sacrifice and until a man becomes a sacrifice he can never see the fire of god in leviticus chapter 9 verse 24 the same thing happened replete in a replica fashion the moment sacrifice came on the altar fire descended in first chronicles 21 26 the moment sacrifice came on the altar fire descended this is why paul was teaching and paul said in romans chapter 12 verse 1 he said i beseech you dearly beloved that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God only because God will separate it unto himself the moment you present your body as a sacrifice God makes that body holy and the way God makes it holy is to put his fire upon it and so that body can no longer carry out any function except to the glorification of God and so when you find the man burning the secret of his ever increasing intensity is sacrifice and the way sacrifice works is that God will diagnose your soul and find out the impact of your fall he will now place a demand on your soul the demand God places is to mortify the body because God has seen that the body is a slave of the soul and the soul is where the impact of the fall is and so when God wants to take the body he diagnoses the soul and when he finds the doorway through which the body is enslaved he puts a consecration upon that doorway the consecration God puts on your soul is your sacrifice one person may be giving all his money don't go and copy him give money based on the allowance of revelation and doctrine but don't follow somebody else who is giving all his money probably god saw that there is lust for money in his soul and so the sacrifice requirement god put on that person is to make sure he doesn't touch money for a long period of time so every good thing that comes to him god demands of it that giving that that man begins to give becomes a sacrifice before God you will find somebody else God discovers he has lost God will not tell him you won't marry until you are 35 now you God needs you to marry because you need a wife to help you because of your irrational decision making process you now look at somebody else who God says don't marry till you are 35 you now say you will do the same thing you will die the sacrifice is based on the effect of the fall he has seen that this man is this suffering lost and marriage will stop it and so for the first 35 years of his life he demands absolute purity and consecration and so that thing that man is doing will be a body to his soul because everywhere he sees women his body rises and so god will tell him that energy that you will meet when you see women you will bring that energy to the altar and so that man will discover the only thing that will tame his body is to pray in tongues all night and so he'll be praying in tongues all night not because he wants to see a vision because he wants to tame the body now that prayer all night becomes a sacrifice you will pray like that your result will not be like that man because every time that man stands at night 
in order to tame the body in the day god sees it as honor to him and that honor becomes a sacrifice on the altar there are some other persons that god notices that they are full of pride and so god will tell them you will never start a ministry all your life you will serve and then the person will be serving all his life that is beautiful but if you are a pioneer and you say because this person is serving all my life you will limit your potential because the sacrifice is predicated upon the wisdom of God his sovereignty and his diagnosis of the impact of the fall upon your soul when you discover God's consecration demand on you and you start keeping it the fire will now rest so when we talk about sacrifice we are not talking about tearing yourself with iron we are not talking about stabbing yourself when we talk about sacrifice we are talking about dogged commitment to consecration and God is the one that will issue out your consecration to you. If you fail in your consecration, you have been disqualified from carrying fire. Somebody else can stand in the public and act proud. God will see it as sin. If you stand in the public and act proud, it's not only a sin, it's disqualification. So the impact of the judgment on you will be more than that person that is not a consecration requirement. Hope you know, in the days of Samson, people were babbing her. But Samson was not permitted to cut his hair. Because when Samson cuts his hair, it's not fashion. When Samson cuts his hair, it's defilement. And the authority, the power, and the fire will lift. Hope you know, Samson's mother was not permitted to eat any meat or strong wine. Not because there was anything wrong in drinking wine. But for her, drinking wine is not relaxation, it's defilement. The moment she drinks any strong drink, she has been disqualified from the right of giving birth to a Nazarite. And so your sacrifice that God demands to bring the fire of God upon your life is the consecration requirement. There are some of you here that God will tell you, never speak anything against any man of God. Somebody else will do it, it's a sin, God will forgive him. You, if you do it, you have been disqualified. Maybe the honor God wants to bring over your life is what you use your mouth to cancel. And so you will do ministry for 50 years. Nobody will honor you. You will do everything right. But nobody will honor you. Because the consecration requirement to bring that level of honor on your life. Was that you shouldn't talk against anybody. But you went somewhere they were talking. You joined them. Those who did it with you. After one week they will say oh Lord I'm sorry. They will hear a message. Oh Lord I'm sorry. I spoke against your servant. God will forgive them. When you pray God will forgive you. But you will never have honor. Because the key to your honor is tied to your honoring others who are ahead of you. This is how consecration works. And so when this consecration becomes a law over you, God sees that law as sacrifice. This is why Paul began his journey. He said, I'm a teacher and an apostle. He went further. He said, I'm a servant of God. He went further. He said, I'm a prisoner of Christ. Because he now knew that ordination, you don't need to do anything. Mary didn't do anything. They just say you have found favor with God. But he discovered for him to keep the weight of what was on his life. He didn't need only revelation. He needs to become a prisoner. A young generation is a generation that prides in revelations and gifts of the spirit. But a generation that has spiritual understanding is a generation that knows the way of sacrifice. And so when you find such people, they know God can choose you by his sovereignty. You don't need to do anything. But they know for God to walk with you, you need to do everything. You will give everything it takes for God to walk with you. You don't need to do anything for God to choose you. God will decide to choose you. That's why Judas Iscariot did nothing but for you to remain with God. For God to walk with you and for God to rest upon you, you will do everything. And everything is called sacrifice. It's a consecration requirement. There are many persons that have great graces. For those of you who have been Christians for 10 years, you know some people that gave their hearts to Christ and began to prophesy from that day. You know some people that gave their hearts to Christ and began to pray for the sick and the sick were healed. Where are they today? They didn't do anything for God to choose them. But they would do everything for God to keep them. The keeping of God is the fire of the Holy Spirit and it resonates on consecration. There's a realm you enter where your revelation no longer counts. It is your sacrifice that counts. When you show up, they will not find out what you are saying. They will look at you. He said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. And when he saw the Lord, they didn't ask him about his gift. They didn't ask him about his doctrine. They looked upon him and they found out that the man was a man of unclean lips. And so because there was no sacrifice to tame his tongue, his authority as a prophet was about to be taken up. 
but because of mercy his tongue was purged somebody will be purged tonight and the way you will be purged is that those consecrations you violated three years ago God will reenact it there were some of you who came on campus here God told you until you walk out you will never have a girlfriend there are some of you God told you until you walk out you will never tell anybody I love you but all your friends in 200 level began to boast with boyfriends and girlfriends they began to change with horns. they began to fix eyelashes and when they asked you when you asked them they said their boyfriends gave them you now started feeling lonely that loneliness will be your sacrifice and so when you feel lonely you will present that loneliness to God and as you present that loneliness to God when the oracles of God appear God will see that as a sacrifice and he will rest upon you there are many of you here God told you you will not cheat because he doesn't need your certificate for your destiny he needs your witness for your destiny and so even though you have that carryover for three years you enter the exam hall and suddenly you sat with the scholar he looked at you stranded he said copy you will look at the answer but you also look at your destiny because the great one said don't cheat you will rather come back for an extra year you will come back for another extra year it's either you pay the price to read or you face the shame of failing but for you to cheat is a sacrifice you can never try you want to find out how men become powerful with god these are the doorways you don't become powerful with god just by cheaply associating with somebody you don't become powerful with god simply by doing something that is born out of your senses you become powerful with god because you pay the price of sacrifice and when god sees it he knows that you are dependable and so the way god validates you to your generation is that he puts his fire upon you anything you touch burns and it is the flame that burns that your generation celebrates no generation celebrates the face of a man every generation celebrates the kind of flame that comes out of you they are those that carry the flame of purity they are those that carry the flame of power they are those that carry the flame of influence they are those that carry the flame of gifts of the spirit god will keep burning upon them and their generation will surround them celebrating you want to carry fire you must make up your mind to accept the demands of sacrifice the second way to carry fire is by hunger for god hunger hunger you see as the deer panted after the waters so my soul longed after thee in a dry and in a testy land where no water is the guy was comparing what was happening in his soul to an animal walking in a dry land i once flew over the deserts of egypt and i saw a sea of white dry sand i understood what this scripture meant you enter certain desert as you put your leg the sand will swallow you to your knee level and if you walk like that for five minutes it will peel off your skin because of the heat that is emitted from there so the guy compared the test in his soul to such a dry land so what he's looking for even if it's a drop of water it will quench his test he's in a desperate condition and only the presence of god matters and so when a man becomes hungry for god separation becomes his signature the reason men are separated unto god is not because it's a regular routine to have retreats that is important it's a good spiritual discipline but the reason men are separated to God is because there is a hunger in their spirit that cannot be satisfied. They thank God for the praise and worship. They thank God for the prayer session. They thank God for the word session. But there is a place where they go to receive the keys of the Almighty. In that sacred place where no other person is permitted to come. That is where the business of intimacy is routed. You will find that place in God where no other person is permitted to come. John said that which we have heard. That which we have seen. That which we have looked upon. And our hands have handled of the word of life. They heard it first. A preacher preached it intelligently. You have come here this morning. You are hearing me preaching the oracles of God. They have seen men demonstrate it. But the point came. They say, I don't want to go through the medium of a preacher. I don't want to go through the medium of a service. The same way you appeared to Moses on the mountains of Horeb. I want to find you that way. So the burdens and the hunger for encounter begins to drive them. And sometimes they will trek to the center of the forest where there are no noise. The noise of internet, the noise of Instagram, the noise of friends. Even your best friend can become a noise maker. There is a level hunger we get to. Even your pastor can become a noise maker. Because what he's preaching cannot satisfy the test of your soul. And so even though you honor your pastor, you will turn away. And find out that God that dwells in the midst of the fire. 
the Bible said Moses stepped into the deep darkness where God was. There's a realm a man gets to where it is only him and God. And he will tell him, I will not go until I see you. Show me thy glory. Show me thy glory. Show me thy glory. When a man gets there, he becomes a candidate of fire. Nobody went there and came out alone. He said when Moses descended, he wished not that his face began to shine. Something had touched him. Most of us have not traveled long enough. We journey one step and we come back seven steps. Internet has locked you. Facebook chat, Snapchat, Instagram videos have locked you into this world. And because you remain in this world, the only thing you hunger for are the mundane. And when you eat food, you are satisfied. When you eat a fry, fried chicken, you say, oh, the Lord is good. If the only thing that satisfies your soul is fried chicken, it means your soul is, is, is quite vain. There are places we go to that we are looking for the fire that is in the courts of heaven. There are places we go to we are looking for the light that comes out of the face of Abba. There are places we go to that we want to see the truth. This were the hunger the prophets of old had. The Bible spoke concerning Ezekiel. He said in the thirtieth year, on the fourth month in the fifth day, I was among the captives by the river Kabar. And he said, I saw visions of God. Even though he was a captive, all he was looking for was the light that breaks out of heaven. John said, I was in the eye called Patmos. Huh. Ah. What did the fathers know? He was in an island. They sentenced him for death. But even with death sentence, his hunger could not be tamed. A man was rejected by society. Do you know what it means for society to reject you? Get out! We don't need you anymore. It didn't matter what everybody said. His ministry was taken from him. But he desired God more than ministry. This is not the story men tell today that is not ministry. That is not what we are saying. The guy was kicked out of his ministry. And they didn't just kill him. They tried to kill him when they couldn't. They threw him to an island to die. But even while he was in the island, he said, I was in the spirit on the last day. There's a place I stand where nothing matters. I was in the spirit on the last day. I was in the spirit. And suddenly, he said, I had a sound. Ah. Ah. Oh Lord, baptize us with hunger. Ah. 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 Ali, ah, hey.
Hatta ah. I wish I had time to help me I want to lay hands on this one there's such a thing called the transference of grace he said Moses laid hands upon Joshua and they fell upon him the spirit of wisdom I carried the fire of God by the grace of God and so now there's about to be a transference in this hall on the gallery and outside wherever you are now is the hour now is the hour This is the hour, such as I have. Father, the fire that brings witness, the fire that opens the doors to nations, the fire that transforms, the fire that purifies. Wherever they are, there are over 30 of you stepping into that baptism now. In the name of Jesus, I release that fire now. Oh, no. 
for me. Can you lift your hands toward heaven? This is the final impartation. Please hear me. God told me 30 persons. I've released an impartation for 7. I've released an impartation for 12. Now there are 11 persons. Hear this. There is a dangerous dimension of God's grace about to rest on you. The door of nations will open. Kings will come to you. The power of God, the brilliance. Help them please, help them. The brilliance of the spirit will be manifested through you. But this is why I want to speak over you. There will be battles. There will be warfares. There will be oppositions. But hear this. The reason the things that happen to us happen to us is for the generations after us. We have seen battles. We have seen opposition. We have seen warfare. Warfare that should have destroyed us. But the hand of God says no. I pray over you now. And at the same time, I activate those places. If you were blessed by this message you just listened to, and you wish to make Jesus your Lord and personal Savior, kindly repeat the prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe in your Son, Jesus Christ, and that He died for my sins and was raised from the dead for my justification. I therefore confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord of my life. 
I receive eternal life into my spirit. I am born again. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. If you just said this prayers, please send us an email at info at encounterjesusministry.org or info.ejfi.ng at gmail.com. You can also visit our website at www.encounterjesusministry.org. 